use Snell's law now to explain exactly why rainbows fall. So white light, such as the light that surrounds me, or as we'll see shortly, the light coming out of this light box, comprises of lots of different wavelengths of visible light. So in white light, we've got some red, which has a wavelength of about 700 nanometers, and some blue light with a wavelength of about 475 nanometers. Now glass actually has a diff slightly different refractive index for different colors. So for red light, the refractive index of glass is around about 1.513, whereas for blue light, the refractive index is around about 1.532. And so according to Snell's law, as we've got different refractive indices, we would expect these different colors of light to be bent a different amount. So because N1 on N2 is different, we would expect sine theta 2 on sine theta 1 to be different. So let's have a look now at what happens when we shine light from this light box through this prism and then look at the light coming out of the prism on the other side. In order to see it clearly, we're going to have to turn out the lights. So what we have here is a ray of light coming from the light box to the prism. You can see the ray of light here. The inside the prism it is refracted and so it bends and the amount of bending depends on the color of the light. And then it exits from the prism and you can see when it exits from the prism the light's been split into its different colors. So here we've got red light on this side and the blue or indigo light on this side. So let's have a look at some ray tracing now to show exactly why this happens using Snell's law. So what we have here is a diagram showing us a prism and the light ray coming in. So the light ray is making an angle of 45 degrees with the normal to this prism. And this glass prism has different refractive indexes for red light and blue light. So let's start by performing the calculation for the red light. From Snell's law, we know that sine theta r, which is the angle of refraction for the red light, is equal to the refractive index in air, which is medium 1, over the refractive index for red light in the glass, which is medium 2, times sine theta a. This is just an algebraic rearrangement of Snell's law. And now we can substitute in the numbers. We've got that the refractive index of air is 1. For glass with red light, it's 1.513. And the angle of incidence in the air is equal to sine 45. So this is equal to 0 0.467, which tells us that the angle of reflection for red light is equal to 27.86 degrees. So let's draw that now. Here's our red light and this angle in here is equal to 27.86 degrees. Now the light actually gets refracted twice because it gets refracted once again as it's leaving the prism. So let's draw the normal there. And now we'll need to do some simple geometry to work out the angles involved. Now, because this normal forms a 90 degree angle, if this is 27.86 here, then here is 90 minus 27.86. So this angle in here is equal to 62.1. And now all the angles in the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So using this triangle here, We've got 60 plus 62.1 plus this angle is equal to 180. So we can solve that to get that the angle in here is equal to 57.9 degrees. And that angle... And so the angle of incidence when it's leaving the glass prism is this one here. And that will be 90 minus the 57.9 which is equal to 32.1. Okay, so now we can work out the angle as it leaves the prism. So we've now got 
that the angle in air for the red light is equal to the refractive index of the glass for red light over the refractive index of air times sine theta rr, let's call it, it's this 32.1. So substituting in, we've got 1.513 on 1 times sine of 32.1. And so this is equal to 0 0.804. And so theta AR is equal to 53.5 degrees. So let's sketch that red light leaving the prism now. So it forms a ray down here. And this angle in here is equal to 53.5 degrees. Now what we need to do is repeat this process for the blue light. So we've got the sine theta r for the blue light. So this white beam consists of red and blue light. So it's got the same angle of incidence there. It's equal to Na over Ng for the blue light times sine theta a. And so this is equal to 1 over 1.532. So this is a refractive index for blue light times sine 45. And so this is giving us 0 0.462. And so theta is equal to 27.48 degrees. So here we had 27.86. This is a slightly smaller angle. So we can see that the blue light is going to go a bit more in this direction. We can then draw the normal here and then apply the same geometric process to work out what the angle is going to be. So this was 62.1 before. For the blue light it is equal to 62.52 and so this gives us an angle in here of 53.5 degrees, which means that this angle here is equal to 32.52 degrees. So this is the angle that we're going to have to use. So we've got that sine theta in the air for the blue light is equal to the refractive index for blue light over the refractive index for air times sine theta r blue air which is this 32.52 so this is equal to 1.532 over 1 times sine of 32.5 degrees and solving that we end up with this is equal to 0 0.8236 which gives us theta a for the blue light so the angle that it makes in air is 55 0.44 degrees and so it's going to come out at a slightly larger angle to the normal than the red light and so this is what gives us this rainbow effect in between the red and the blue we've got the orange yellow green etc this splitting of white light into its different colors red to blue is known as dispersion so this, along with total internal reflection, which we're about to learn about, leads to the formation of the rainbows in the sky. This is actually really well explained by Joe in Viz Clips, so I'll provide you with the link to that.